against Tony Miles. Let's flip it because um, the Galach is playing the Black Peaches. All right, so the Englishman playing an English opening. Knight of six. Knight c3. E5. Knight f3. Four knights variation. E3, the quiet line. Bishop b4. Queen c2, castle. Knight d5. Rook e8. Bishop. This is interesting. Bishop to d3. No, you can't push that pawn because he can just give it sufficient so check. Well, no. Yeah, check, and then when you take, then he can take. He can't push the pawn. So he played g6. a3, <laughs> bishop back to f8. You probably could have seen that coming after g6. Knight takes knight check and queen takes knight. Bishop to e4, pawn to d6, pawn to b4 now. Queen back to c7, or e7, excuse me. Bishop to b2. Now bishop g7 and castles. Well, this line, this tabia has been reached five times in the chess.com database. And out of those five times, black has won twice and drawn three, and white has won zero. Bishop to g4, pawn to d3, knight to d8, Knight to d2, and now with pawn to f5 on move 15, this is the first move that is unique to this game. Bishop goes to d5 to throw in a quick check here. King h8, and now if he wants to keep this here, he's probably got to stop this from coming forward. This bishop isn't going to be all that happy either. Yeah, b5 seems uh, to call out. Only other option that I'm thinking about is to give the bishop a path of retreat. So another possible move might be c5. One thing about b5 is it relinquishes power over the c5 square. Now h3, because this bishop is not all that happy either, you are correct. So h3 is probably a move as well. I mean, he only has one square to go to. Well, 
I mean, he could go to E2 for a second, but then he's a goner. So he did try C5. And instead of capturing the pawn, C6 is played. I wonder if white can capture here before retreating the the bishop somewhere along this path. You can capture with tempo. I wonder if that's a move. Let's see what he did. He did. <laughs> he did capture. Queen takes d6. Oh, I did not expect that. I thought the entire point to c5 was to bring the bishop back this way. That is a bit surprising, especially since this bishop is can be made uncomfortable. Sure, this bishop has no prospects. I'm a bit surprised by that move. I am a bit surprised. I did mention this was played at Hogevin's in Week on Zay, January 25th, 1977. And I know I've said this many times before, but I'll just repeat it in case you didn't know. Hoogevins is the original name of the Chorus Tournament, which was the name preceding the current name Tata Steel. Basically all steel companies, one bought out another and got bought out by another. All right, so now bishop to c3, knight to c7. White's got to be pretty happy with his position now. And black has got to be somewhat satisfied as well. White's got this going. Black's got this one going. I think black has got to be happy not to have to worry about that bishop. I'd say both sides are probably pretty content here. Okay, so already d3 is being targeted. And rook f d1 will begin to help defend. He has two defenders on it. I would anticipate him doubling his rooks on the d-file. Queen to c4. Hmm. Knight to b6. So we have a queen trade. Now that, that wins for black. That wins for black. I 
Black ends up one piece to the good for two pawns. Okay, I mean, maybe... Maybe these are going to be... Oh, no, this pawn can be taken, so... No, only one pawn. Okay, knight g5 isn't going to work there. Now maybe knight g5 can be played, but it's just going to allow him to double up here. Pawn to e4. Bishop to f6. King to f1. King to g2. Why did he give that pawn up? <clears throat> I ask you. Why did he give away this pawn? Somebody want to tell me? Because I don't know. Why not continue to bring your king into the game as you're approaching? The five pawn has three attackers against it. I only see two. Well, he is obstructed by his own pawn, so you're saying he's going to play pawn takes f5 and then get a third attacker on e5? Hmm. Okay, that might be. I don't care for this this idea. I, I, I much rather personally. I, I think that's okay. That's okay. I see your idea. And now overpower on e five. Ah. I see, said the blind man. Yeah. He did take because he decided to come over here and pick this one off. This guy's pinned, can't capture the knight. So this knight move is pretty clever. Rookie eight. And he didn't take the pawn after all that. Now why didn't he take the f5 pawn with check, mind you? With check. Getting a little stiff. <clears throat> I mean, isn't the entire point of knight to d4 to win the f pawn with check? Check. Really curious about this. Okay, so instead he played rook to e3. Interesting, but I mean, this is check, so this can't be taken. Well, the knight's not pinned, he can give check, so the bishop cannot take. He gives check, king moves out of check, and then bishop takes f6, and then the king has to decide whether it wants the knight or the bishop. He did give check, he did move out of check, he did take the f6, and what does he choose? The 
Knight or the bishop? Decided on the knight. <clears throat> Probably because it also adds support to his E pawn. This guy has to move now. Or not. But get allowing this guy ever closer. This could be dangerous. Bishop to d4. You know, Tony Miles was really one of the top players for a few years when I was young. Oh, I'm guessing in the 80s, late 70s, early 80s, whenever I was in high school. But right, right now, um, he's not, <laughs> doesn't seem like he's playing his best chess to me. I wonder what round this was. You know, you never know what factors play in. It's the 25th, so it had to be pretty late in the event. I wonder if it tells what round it was. It was the 10th round. You never know what other factors weigh in here, fatigue and things like that. And right, what, whether there's a time control issue, although this right now was bishop d4 was moved 36, so, you know, up in here he's approaching the time control, probably. And being on a white square, okay, forever is a long time. I mean, the, the rook's going to come over. And the king can't, okay, the king can come up with tempo. That's true. Oh, that's right. Okay. Well, you. I was saying if the king were... Yeah, right now you can't come up here. I was just thinking here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because if the king comes up from there, rook comes over, check, and then this is gone. He might... <laughs> he might not mind that with this pawn, though. You know, let, let's say you had such a thing where the... Rook comes over and you take and then he takes and then you get your king up here with the knight here. Okay, the knight wasn't there yet though. He's actually saying, you can't take my knight because I'm going to promote if you do. This was a real nifty move, this one. This knight c4 is a real clever move. Rook e2. You mean here instead, play rook e2? I think now he can play king e4. Not a hundred percent sure. If I play here, Bishop has to move somewhere. You've got to get this rook somewhere. I'd still bring the knight in. 
I'm not sure here of the best continuation. Yeah, Rookie 2 probably is okay, though. This this is so sweet, this move. It defends the next square for the pawn. It cannot be captured because pawn push then promotes. The promotion square is a light-colored square. King is cut off. Now rook d1 has got to be played. Is that the right move here? Why can't he just play bishop c3 now? I think. What else? Getting a little bleary eyed. I'm going to need a coffee before tonight's tournament. Okay, well, anyway, pawn and then bishop c3 is played. And he brings the rook over, but now the king can come up. Hmm. He gives him check, king comes back up. Pawn to b5. Yeah. Rook to g8. Pawn takes pawn. Pawn takes pawn. This is looking awfully drawish all of a sudden. I don't think... I don't think black quite played that right. I mean, even earlier he could have picked off this... Bishop cannot take pawn. Why can't bishop take pawn? Oh, because of this, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, we got that fork there. It is tactically protected as in the other game. Now the king is going to approve and Hit the weaknesses of the white camp. Nice. That was so nifty. Very nifty indeed. There's a check. That was good technique right there. Oh. Well, what's he doing there? He can't, he can't capture that. This is three steps away from home. He can't capture the bishop. Yeah, that's the right thing to do. Get that just in time. Just in time. <laughs> and white resigned. 